Number one, of course, I'm sure you guys are aware of what's happened with Gail King and Oprah. Um, there's been a lot of backlash with them, which has been very interesting to see, right? Um, it, it ties in with me very neatly to this issue that I've heard a lot of people say, especially people from like The Root, um, the kind of black-owned publication. Um, some other places too, maybe Shade Room has said the same sort of thing, and maybe Hollywood are not saying the same sort, sort of thing too, where there has been an issue where a lot of these media platforms that are black-owned, especially the American-based ones or the US ones, they feel as if the big um, black Hollywood elites, entertainment elites, they feel as if they get shunned by them, that they purposely stay away from giving them exclusives, giving them um, opportunities to interview them or to feature them in a publication. They don't want anything to do with them for the most part, right? And then a lot of it was exemplified via this video that this guy posted on social media, right? On, on Worldstar, sorry. This guy from The Root posted this video on Worldstar where he basically said that when you went to the Grammys, all the celebrities that are walking past on the red carpets, they were purposely pushing them ahead. they were basically telling them not to talk to the black owned media and i think for the most part what they do with a celebrity which is quite you know horrible quite horrible for those involved yeah it's usually a pecking order it seems like on the red carpet so as the celebrities are coming in from the let's say from left to the right all the big publications are on that side so all the like cbs good morning all those e entertainment all those really glitzy ones everyone wants to be on they're all on there but then all the kind of independent kind of ones all the kind of ones that are bootstrapped they're towards the end so what ends up happening is I'm assuming most of the celebrities spend all their time, their publicists want them to go speak to all the big publications because that's where they're going to get placements. That's where they're going to have the advantage of sitting alongside maybe some people they want to sit alongside to so help their career trajectory. And then they waste or they kind of use the majority of their time coming to through the red carpet on that section. And then by the time they get to the end, they've got no time to talk to the black owned media. So it kind of looks as if they're purposely staying away from them. But I also think they are. If we're, very, if we're going to be completely honest, most black media is quite messy, isn't it? Especially the the the, the Instagram pages and that they they probably do more damage to uh, black celebrities' career trajectories than any other platform will do, right? Which is makes it ironic that a lot of people have a real big stink, make a big stink of what TMZ do, right? Don't get me wrong, TMZ's practices aren't the best, but some of the stuff that Shade Room pop out, some of the stuff that Bossit put out, some of the stuff that you know Lipstick and all these places put out isn't the most constructive to you know, uh, perpetuating this image of how black celebrities kind of conduct themselves in, you know, entertainment world. And maybe it's true, maybe it's not. But I thought this video was very, very enlightening about the current issue at hand and maybe probably ties into what was said about Gail King with um, Kobe. Let's see if I can find it here. It was on the da, 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 Oprah's and Tears. Where is it here? Uh, where are you? 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 Is it here? I can't find it. Oh, I don't, yeah, there you go. Found it, found it, found it. So it's, it's, it's this video, right? This video from Worldstar kind of really speaks about the issue that's currently on hand. Let me get up on the screen. Here we go. Oh, it's playing. It's a plane. It's taking ages. My computer's really slow. Last night was the 62nd annual Grammy Awards, and it makes it the 14th year that Black Tree TV has been there to cover the Grammys. Most things haven't changed over the years. I mean, this year was especially somber uh, with the death of Kobe Bryant, but the past years we've had the death of Whitney Houston um, and the death of other great people preceding the Grammys that's, that's made it somber night. So that's not totally unusual as extraordinary uh, a tragedy as it, as it was to lose Kobe. But I want to show you guys what really happens on the carpets, because I, I, I usually give you guys the clean edit. You see the people we talk to, not really the people we don't talk to. But there's a struggle, especially for black media. The struggle is, is multifaceted. First, there's the placement that we are on the carpet, which is usually we're all bundled near the end of the carpet. Yeah, Second, it's the publicists that represent the talent, which you'll see in some of these videos. And let's fast forward a little bit because it's the bit where he basically says what he's you see them he see you see him trying to beckon them over and they're basically shooting them away, right? Look, it's a Quavo. Look, 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 look. Come on man, do the black media man. Don't just do vulture. Don't just do the don't do just don't just do people. Don't just do people, Quavo. Come on, Quavo. How you gonna be for the hood like that? I'm calling you <laughs> So of course, right? Obviously, no one called Lil Nas X because they know he's like, you know, he's a proper pop star. That's not happening anyway. So he's, he's getting ushered down. Right. And then it continues here. Nothing's actually changing. Look. More celebrities coming through. 
Ah, bueno, por Sudamérica. Una preguntita nomás. Hay un, tr hay un troncón ahí, un troncón. Even traditional South American media is not getting any attention. So, yeah, that's the issue going on. But then when you watch this interview with Gail King and Leslie Jones, I think her name is, right? Or Leslie Owens? I forgot her name. Leslie something. Anyway, this really famous women's basketball player who I not, don't have any knowledge on. It kind of makes you understand why some of these celebrities don't want to talk to black-owned media in the, for, the, for, the, for the most part, right? Because look what happens when they actually speak to them. Gail King thought this was going to be a good idea for the interview. And again, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to play the video because I'm probably going to get demonetized. So I'm going to just leave the video off screen, but you can just hear the audio in the background. So this is from CBS this morning, right? It's a snippet. Again, to in all f fairness to and Gail King, his let's just pause this now. Complicated because of sexual In all in all fairness to Gail King, CBS this morning did do her dirty, right? I think for the most part, we're, we're all aware. If you're part of, if you've ever done things on social media, done anything doing marketing, you know that you do try and create clips or try and create some kind of clickbait in order to kind of engage an audience to get them curious to click your link and then provide them value on the other side right that's that's the ultimate aim so there are there is a i'm pretty sure there's a marketing a social media department in cbs that deals with all the clips and they're kind of um away from girl king's control but in their defense they wouldn't be able to clip this unless girl king says what she said right and the interviewers if you see the beginning of this interview again it's a five minute snippet and this probably comes around the three minute mark right three minute ten to be exact there's obviously, it's a lead-up question. They're talking about, you know, uh, Kobe Bryant's legacy, what he did for women's basketball, the fact that he was such a ardent supporter of it, the fact that his daughter, Gianni, was um, obviously looking to pursue a career in there. There's a lot towards that conversation that had nothing really to lead up to the whole sexual abuse allegation in question. So, it, if anything, it still makes the interview worse because there was no need to ask these questions, right? It's not something we need to speak about in general especially from the black owned media side of things right maybe i get cbs Gail King doesn't own cbs oprah doesn't own cbs i'm not saying that but from their side of things there should be you know how it's like if it's your friend that went through something shitty you're not the one that's going to be on social media calling them names and saying mad stuff or wanting to be cancelled that's why i kind of view it as like it's not necessarily you're kind of condoning their behavior of what they did you're just going to remain quiet because that's your friend, right? And then maybe behind closed doors, you might chastise them, you might call them up and call them your name and son and say how they've kind of ruined your opinion of them, whatever, right? But in public, you're, most you're going to say is that I'm disappointed, right? I'm disappointed. That's all. But you're not going to say more than that. So imagine if your, person, if your friend passed and they did something messed up back in the day, you're not going to then, you know, the person hasn't even buried. You're not going to say these things. So that's the problem I have with it. Gail King shouldn't have even said okay. this. But anyway, let's tell you what she said. Because saying. of the sexual assault charge, which was dismissed in 2003, 2004. Is it complicated for you as a woman, as a WNBA player? It's not complicated for me at all. Even if there's a few times that we've been at a club at the same time. Kobe's not the kind of guy. Never been like, you know, at least go get that girl or tell her or send her this. I have other NBA friends that are like that. Mm -hmm. Kobe's, he, he was never like that. I just never see, have ever seen him being the kind of person that would be, do something to violate a woman or be aggressive in that way. I, that's just not the person that I know. But Lisa, you wouldn't see it though. As a friend, you wouldn't see it. So that's the part of the question that I didn't really like. Cause I think you can ask the question and be like, okay, that's completely understandable. And just for, in terms of, and then you could just end it like that wasn't intended to be a disrespectful question i just thought something we needed to put out there and then just move on right but the fact that she says that's not something that you would see kind of implying that he could be a sexual predator he could be a rapist he could be someone that could do that stuff to a woman is really distasteful because again i guess because we live in a court of public opinion right because people can get quote-unquote cancelled that somehow you can get found not guilty of a crime and people still feel like it's fair game to keep flogging you with that thing but right? it's just like I understand sometimes the criminal justice system can not be the most consistent thing in the world, but there is some kind of protocol, some kind of apparatus we have in place where if you do something wrong, we are able to put you up in front of a court of your peers, in front of a court of you know people in society, be able to take people from various sides of the criminal justice system in order to kind of d d dig in deep in the case, you know, an impartial judge, uh, jury, blah de blah blah. If they finally come to the decision that you know you are not guilty or that there's no uh, basis for this allegation or to take it to court. And again, you have to imagine, people are worth millions. There's a lot of money to be gained from the prosecutors and from the defense side of things if this thing goes to trial anyway. So in their interest, it should go to trial. If it doesn't go to trial, it's probably a good indication that there probably isn't much to it. And no one wants to be embarrassed. No one wants to be put 
through the trial system have the opportunity or the possibility for that person being prosecuted then come back and sue them because of of you know of how their reputation got damaged so it's not as if like it's not as if the criminal criminal justice system is hoping that he's innocent if anything they'd prefer if he was guilty right so sometimes we just need to be able to be like okay even though we think we are it's probably like the flat earth thing isn't it people think because they do a couple of google searches online and they are able to read a couple of bits of scientific information that they can somehow discount all the years of data and information and experiments and research has gone into kind of understanding the universe and the planet that we're on and they can somehow come to conclusions on the earth is flat same with this right somehow people can think that they get, they know more about the criminal justice system or they know about this case more so than someone that has spent their entire life that their livelihood depends on it they know more than them they can't just be okay with the decision that's been made and maybe you don't even need to be okay with it just accept it and move on you don't need to be okay with it or agree just be able to accept it and don't use the um don't use what happened to that person as something to beat them over the head with again i just think it's really distasteful and again i think that really it's a weird example but i honestly think this is a an, this is a kind of illustration as to why most of those celebrities that walk down the grammy red carpet oscars red carpet are very reluctant to speak to the black blogs or that thing because they know they're going to come with the mess because i think there is there is in the same way that he's going, hey, Quavo, Quavo, come on, you don't talk to black media, man, come on, man, how you going to do the hood like that, right? The, the, the reason, the, and he, even thinking you're representing the hood standing on the Grammy um, runway is fucking insane, but the reason why he feels that he can say that because he feels as if, like, Quavo owes him something because he's black, you're black. They feel like they owe, like, there's a kind of, you have to you have to be able to recipe, you have to be able to kind of, like, pay them back for all the stuff that you, they've done for you. Some, I don't know what, what that is, right? But, because in, in, in reality, you know, this, the talent is more important than the publications, right? Without the, the talent, the publication wouldn't exist um, for that regard. You, you could probably say without, without publication, the talent wouldn't exist, but I don't agree. Talent is more important. So the fact that you think that you're deserving or you're entitled to Quavo's time because you happen to share the same skin colour is pretty insane. But that sense of entitlement, I think, also runs into... It also seeps into the this idea that they feel like they can say whatever and ask you whatever because they're black owned media like they can come up to you and ask you about your baby mother they can come up to you and ask you about your children about your the strength of your marriage that really personal and intrusive conversations or questions that you wouldn't necessarily see a white or predominantly kind of general mainstream audience asking a popular artist or a popular celebrity or someone alias like a brad pitt or Angelina jolie right they wouldn't risk that because they want them to come back on their show like they wouldn't risk talking about you know, Brad and Angelina's um, relationship trouble in front of Brad Pitt. They know, obviously, publicists will tell them what's off limits, but they know not to play that game. But I feel like mostly black owned media, they don't really have the long term, the long, the long game in kind of mind. They kind of just go for the kind of lowest hanging fruit. They'll waste opportunity to get in front of Jay Z and just start asking him about what happened in Liverpool Salon. Just like, you see what happened. You saw what happened, man. You heard what happened on the albums. Like, that's enough. That should be enough now. You've seen them out since that. Right, you should, you should. If they can move on, you should be able to move on too. But they don't. They just want the mess. They want the drama. They want the clicks. And somehow, oddly enough, it's happened to. It's happened to. It's it's it, that that kind of um, viral virus has kind of really um, permeated and run all the way across the kind of someone like a Gail King, who you would have thought would be a lot more, you know. But again, I'm, I'm I think it's a good thing because people have been looking at Oprah with a bit of a stink eye, right? Ever since her kind of complete silence on the whole Harvey Weinstein thing, right? She's been able to. She wants to. She went after Michael Jackson. Um, obviously retracted that in some way, shape, or form. Uh, went after. I think there's no mention of the Michael Jackson documentary on her YouTube page. Or it was all over her YouTube page beforehand. Now there's this kind of rumor that she's going to be putting that documentary about Russell Simmons. That's kind of gone a bit quiet. Now there's somehow going after Kobe. It's like you're going after all these black prominent black celebrities. Of course we know why because you know Oprah's always had a bit of a disdain for hip hop culture in general. Um, it took a long time to kind of embrace it or to kind of accept it as part of black culture. She didn't really want to promote it for her own personal reasons, which is, you know, no problem about that. But it's good to see that there are some questions being asked about their position and as if they're kind of like hallowed position. They're kind of like, oh, we can't talk anything bad about them because they have to be black. So no, like we have to kind of be honest with ourselves as a culture and be like, hey, maybe we're doing ourselves a bit of disservice. Maybe we're really damaging, you know, same way how, you know, you can talk about police brutality all you like, but, you know, the biggest killer of other black people is our black people, right? So let's get to the real core of the issue and then we can start dealing with the other things outside of it. But if we're not dealing, if we're not kind of mess cleaning up our own mess in our own rooms, then we can't really go out there and start telling the world how to do theirs, right? It's a bit disingenuous, really. 
Um, I would think so, in my opinion. And then on the other side of it, you got what Snoop Dogg says, which is just completely insane, right? <laughs> but this is Snoop Dogg, and he always says something. He always says nutty stuff. So I'm not surprised. I'm surprised people why people are surprised that he goes out on a limb like this. But the way Snoop Dogg talked about her wasn't really nice. Yeah, okay. Out of pocket for that shit. Way out of pocket. What do you gain from that? I swear to God, we the worst. We the fucking worst. We expect more from you, Gail. Don't you hang out with Oprah? Why are y'all attacking us? <laughs> we your people. You ain't coming after fucking Harvey Weinstein asking them dumbass questions. Okay. I get sick of y'all. I want to call you one. Is it okay if I call him one? Funky dog head bitch. How dare you try to tarnish my motherfucking homeboy's reputation, punk motherfucker. Respect the family and back off, bitch, before we come get you. Mm, that's a bit too much. And also, I think, I just, yeah. I don't know, I just don't think you can... Number one, I don't, I think it's fair game, right? I think if TMZ did that, no one would be, no one would have anything bad to say about Snoop if he said that about Harvey Levin, right? Let's, let's just be fair. Everyone's, oh, protect black women. It's just a ridiculous statement to make out there, isn't it? Everyone should be protected. No one should be made to feel like their life is being threatened in public, right? Everyone's life is sacred. Let's be fair about that. Even Harvey Levin. But if Snoop Dogg would have said that about Harvey, no one would have batted an eyelid. They'd be like, yeah, you know, TMZ's trash. TMZ's the devil. But the fact that he says that about girl, everyone's suddenly like, oh no, we can't say that about black queens or black. My mom taught me never to talk about that. It's like, come on, man. If Kobe really was Snoop Dogg's friend and they actually were homies and used to kind of hang out at his house, look after his daughter, she'd be coming over looking after his kids. You you could you're not you should be surprised that he would have that kind of visceral, emotive, aggressive reaction. It makes sense. Of course it's out of line, it's out of pocket, don't say it to anyone. But the fact that somehow um they're above reproach in that re they're above like automatic um emotional reproach is a little bit ridiculous in that respect. But also again, like I'm saying. I just think it goes to it just goes to illustrate the the bigger problem at hand is that we feel it feels as if the kind of those elite guys or kind of like you know um, hip hop Hollywood entertainment elite guys do feel as if their own black publications are probably doing them more harm than good right by perpetuating this kind of negative image or stereotype of black performers but on the other side they also need them to kind of repair their image to kind of tell their story blah 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 so it's a, there's a very conflicted relationship that kind of goes on with them which i think is really um coming to head at the moment especially with this whole Kobe Bryant thing because it seems as if Kobe Bryant because again i wasn't really a big basketball follower but it seems as if he was a very popular figure amongst some of these guys and this is Bruce's reaction to it quickly yeah, why the fuck would you ask some shit like that I don't give a fuck who friend it is. I don't give a fuck she can uh, Obama. Uh oh. Why the fuck would you do something like that? Why would you do that to your people? You know what people are going through, right? Why would you ask a fucking question like that? Trying to tarnish somebody's image. Mm. You do that to your own black people. But. Crack at the crack. You say it. I'm finna fire your ass up. 